far to the east, over the sea, lay a land full of mountains and valleys. In these mountains lay caves where the giants lived, and the humans lived in the valleys. There was a great peace between the humans and the giants, and for years this persisted, until one giant, haggard the horrible, haggard the murderer. He hated humans, he hated the sight of them, the smell of them. As such, he saw them nothing but food to be eaten. And every summer, at midsummer, he would wake and come down from his mountain into the valleys, crying, I'm gonna find you, I'm gonna grab you, I'm gonna eat you. Tearing them asunder, scoffing his face. The humans and the giants, they did not want the beast to be broken. They lived peaceful lives. So they banded together and they managed to drive Haggard away from the shore, deep into the sea, never to return. Haggard did not care. He turned and strode into the sea, walking as giants do, with the water coming up to heal. Soon he came and found a land that had mountains and caves. And there he took residence. For he knew, found in the valleys, like his home, humans, men. And so he set about going from valley to valley. I'm going to find you. I'm going to grab you. And every midsummer. This went on for years valleys and communities being lost to this murderous beast. They'd ha finally, they had enough. And during winter they came together in a great gathering. All men, all villagers coming together and came up with a plan. They would find the cave that the giant slept in and they would wall it up. They would block the light and then not knowing if this would kill they would dig a deep deep pit so they did they found the cave they moved huge rocks to cover the rock face, mountain cave face blocking out all the light and then at the foot of this mountain, they began to dig. The entire country, so I came and helped dig this deep, deep pit. A mile deep, three miles wide. So deep that the giant could not climb his way out. He could not try and pull himself out. So they lay there for months, for a year, they had them dug. Then, cutting down the trees from the hills and the mountains arranged, they sharpened them with spikes, razor, pointed sharp, strong enough and sharp enough to penetrate even a giant's skin. Once they were ready, they covered this huge hole with shrubs to look, make it look like it was completely normal. And then the brave souls went up and pulled the rocks from the cave face. And at midsummer, the sun was at its zenith. Giant woke, more hungry than he 
ever been before. He clawed his way out. He stretched. And then he looked down and he saw, <laughs> he saw men gather. He saw them in great swathes. Here was a feast for him. I'm gonna find ya! I'm gonna grab ya! I'm gonna eat ya! Was his cry. And he began to stride. He began to run down the hill. Faster and faster. The ground shaking at every step. And as he got to the foot, he launched himself at the men in front of him. And as he landed, the ground gave way. The covers of the pit broke with all of the weight of him landing on it. And down he fell. As he cried, landing, being pierced by thousands of razor sharp spikes driven into the bottom of the pit. Silence ran. And the men gathered at the edge, listening, looking, trying to peer down to see if their plan had worked. From the bottom came a sound. A terrifying sound. I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna grab you. I'm gonna eat you. The monster was still alive. The men cleared the hills cutting down more trees, more shrubs, threw it into the pit, throwing pitch and oil, and then grabbing flaming torches, throwing it down into the pit. From the depth, such a fire rose into the air, clouds of and Still, they fed the fire. They were going to kill the monster, no matter what. On it burned for weeks. Until finally, they let the fire die down. Up in the mountains, they broke the levees which had been dammed. And down came the water, cascading down into this pit. And from the depths arose this dark, black cloud, embers fluttering everywhere. Finally, it began to disperse. The lake, which had now been formed, settled. The men gathered at the edge, and they decided that come spring, they would come again and celebrate their victory. The monster was dead. And so it was. At the beginning of spring, the first day of spring, they came and began to celebrate. Crowds ringed the lake. Fires were burning. But as they did, they began to notice clouds appeared to be flittering flying things, dark little things. They watched as they began to descend, getting closer, and then the sound, a very faint sound. Landing on them, 
Scott.